and we are back. I am Skip Murphy. This is Grok Talk, a production of GraniteRock.com from uh, New Hampshire's leading conservative libertarian blog site. And I am here with Mr. Mike. We just got through talking with Steve, talking uh, talking with him from CPAC, and we are now about to, ready to talk to Jorge Mesa Tejada on our educational update. We're awful thankful that he will come on and talk with us every once in a while to say what's going on in education land. Jorge, how are you this morning? Good morning, uh, Skip and uh, Mike. That's correct. I am fine, thank you. I'm enjoying your green room. No food, but it is nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, how was well, it? Well, you know, in a green life, there is no food because the environmentalists want to starve us. I forgot about that. <laughs> so what's new, Jorge? Okay, I figure that this is uh, town and school meeting time in New Hampshire. And I thought that I would talk about two, uh, one item that usually comes up and that people don't know a thing about, namely class size. And the reason why I'm mentioning that is because it is a very political uh, item. You, you know, the parents love it. They fight together the lowest class size possible from the school board, they go home saying, oh, super, my, I'm almost having a one-to-one -one, uh, teacher to student ratio at, at my, 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 for my child, and I'm happy. And what does it mean? And then there is another little uh, statistic that is seldom mentioned by the uh, administration, which is really the one that tells you how well the uh, staff has been apply to the student population, and that is the student-to-teacher ratio. So what I would like to do is talk a few minutes about the difference between class size and student-to-teacher ratio. Does that sound good? That's sure. That's most excellent. And by the way, there were classes of around 35 to 40 kids when I was growing up, and if you have reasonable discipline, it never hurts. Which proves my point. It, it, the class size means nothing. <laughs> okay, so let, let me start by... by uh, defining them. Class size in New Hampshire is defined by minimum standards, ED 30617, where it says that kindergarten through grade two should be 25 or fewer students per teacher, and but the, school, the district should strive not to have more than 20. In grades three to five, it should have about 30 students per teacher, uh, but they should strive for 25. In middle and senior high school, 30 students or fewer per teacher. And then, and then, of course, this doesn't apply to, to large classes like, like gym and labs and things like that. All right. Now, what the, what they, that's what they do. But they leave it up to the school board to define what the uh, class size is for the particular school district. Okay? Now, on, on the other hand, student-to-teacher ratio is statistical measurement correlating the number of full-time equivalent teachers and the number of students, and it is computed annually by the Department of Education for every school district, and they do it for the October enrollment. And that's really the measurement as to how all the professionals that you have are being utilized. The, the, um, the student-to-teacher ratio is for all the students and teachers in public schools and, and public academies. Preschool enrollments and kindergarten are not included in this measurement, nor are the teachers. And total teachers is the full-time equivalent of all teachers for grades 1 through 12. And full-time equivalent means if you have a, a teacher that is there for the full day teaching, but you have some part-time teachers, you also count them in. And um, but and uh, students to teacher ratio, this is very important, is that a measurement of average class size. Got that, guys? So, so that, that is the big difference between the two. Let me give you an example. For the latest measurement, which was uh, published for the enrollment in 2014, Hampstead students to teacher ratio is 11.0. The state average is 12.0. You have 808 students and 68 full-time employee, full equivalent employees. Laconia, on the other hand, is 10.7 to 1. Okay, now, now how do you, you you said employees? And uh, no, full-time equivalent teachers. I okay. should be. I'm, I'm sorry. Thank you for correcting me. 
Yeah, I'm talking uh, I, teachers. I, I just wanted to be sure we were really counting teachers here, Jorge. Sorry. Uh, only teachers. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Okay, now, take, take the Hampstead example. How do you break it down? In Hampstead, we have uh, five classrooms per grade in grades one through eight. So if you multiply that by by uh, five by eight, you get 40 full-time equivalent teachers for those classrooms, okay? What happens to the other 38 teachers? Good question. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we have art teachers, we have music teachers, we have uh, uh, computer teachers and all that, but what? But it's almost twice, twice the, the population. And don't forget, I'm not counting all the aides, you, you, we have about a, maybe a, an equal or more or larger number of educational aides that have been slowly creeping into the district because of special education. You know, the uh, the, uh, the IED, the Individualized Education Plan for some of the special education kids requires a dedicated aid. Well, those get hired. But they do not leave when the kid moves. They stay on because all of a sudden they become, quote, permanent district employees. So you begin to accumulate these, and they are all below the uh, the radar. You and, know, that, and, Jorge, that's a very important point because I hadn't thought about that. I I, I thought these uh, you know these teachers aides and special ed teachers were were generic and fungible. In other words, they were simply recycled when the next uh, kid came into the system. You're saying that they're acquired based on a particular child and then kept forever? Let me be more specific. The special education teachers are full-time teachers. They, 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 they are teachers. Think of them as teachers. I'm, think, I'm thinking of the A's that because of the um, handicaps of, on, of the specific child may be required to aid that kid throughout the day. You know, some of them are incontinent, some of them... And, you know, th th I mean, there are all, all sorts of reasons why you have to have a one-on-one -on -one to, to be with the kid all day in addition to the teacher. That's what I'm talking about. Now, isn't this a, a function or an outgrowth of when they used to, I wouldn't say house all these special ed kids into one room, but I remember it was a so, somewhat of a, oh, you're in room 113 kind of deal when I was growing up in the town of Brockton. And we knew that that's where all the special kids were being kept. And there were always a lot of, you know, there was the main teacher and then there were a lot of aides because for exactly why, uh, the reasons that you're talking about, but never all that many aides. Now we're there, we're there trying to mainstream them um, into the regular classrooms. Is this a, one of the reasons why you've seen the explosion of extra personnel costs? No, it's because, because the, uh, it, since the, since the teacher or teacher of the classroom cannot handle all the special education needs of every single student in there, then an aide comes with a child. Right. So maybe right. And I'm, I'm sorry, Jorge, but that's exactly what I'm trying to point out, that if you had one teacher and five aides in a, in a class dedicated to special ed, instead, you know, your personnel oh, class no, no, would no, be lower not. because, you know, nowadays all of those special ed kids are in lots of different classrooms and it might now take 15 special ed uh, para, para teachers. Well, the thing is we no longer have is special education classrooms. Right. And, and, they're, uh, they're all integrated. Right, and that's why I'm saying because of mainlining, it has necessarily pushed up the personnel costs and they just get... You know, they just never go away because bureaucracies True. never want to grow smaller. They only want to grow larger. True. The intent is good, but the execution is at fault. Because my point is that, sure, get the special aid, the, um, the educational aid to go with the kid, say, from grades one through four. But when he moves to middle school, I move him to middle school, or when the kid leaves the district, then that aids employment is terminated but that doesn't happen so we begin to accumulate leftover shall i say aids yep so, so, and what, that's so what, why don't they get recycled to the next kid because they're constantly, so are, they're constantly justifying more based on kids coming in right right some are and but but it is it's very hard to to uh to get a, a, a full accounting of that because they they are under the radar. They are not as visible as teachers in the uh, in the in the payroll. 
and it's all overhead cost. And, and I have yeah. to, I, I have to ask, really, why do we have what appears to be a plague of this right now? Because, uh, again, you know, going back to growing up, uh, you and I and Skip probably remember uh, you know, a very minimal number of, of special needs kids in a school of hundreds. Uh, oh, oh, okay. th- th- I, I don't understand why uh, so many people are classified as in need of a personal assistant, and what the hell happens when they enter the workforce? Mike, if I may, let me defer that for another talk, because now you're going into special education, and that's a totally different uh, I look discussion. forward to that. Okay, okay. let's stay, stay with now. We're now, I just stated what class size is versus uh, uh, student-teacher ratio. And I was just trying to tell you that, that of the two metrics, the one that gives you the more accurate picture of the personnel, how personnel is being allocated, is student-teacher ratio. Now, class size, on the other hand, is a great political football. The, you know, parents keep fighting for the lowest class size, and they go home saying, oh, even though my kid's in public school, I almost have private school um, ratios because I almost have a one-to-one teacher with, you know, ratio with my teacher, my kids get in a specialized situation. But the problem is that class size, except in grades one through four, is really meaningless. Because once the attendance is taken at middle and high school homerooms, the students disperse. And what happens in, 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 in science, in math, and in English, and all that, has no relationship to the homeroom ratio, which is what they use to, to publicize the, uh, you know, the, the, how they meet the stable of education ratios. So that that's some. It, it is it, the the, the uh, administration loves the parents to talk about class size because it makes you feel good, but it's really meaningless. But the teachers union just love it because now they can lobby for more employees. Wow. Yeah, it just never stops. Jorge, we've basically come to the end of the segment here, and once again, I want to say thanks for coming on, giving us another view into the educational system, especially here in New Hampshire. And I'm hoping that you will come back and talk about what Mike was trying to lead you into was the the discussion, and me to some extent as well, uh, a discussion on special ed and how that is staffed. And and if if your audience could send you uh, suggestions as to what they would what topics they would like to hear. I would love to entertain that. Oh, absolutely. In fact, and finally, and finally, I would like to say that I'm going to post my, my remarks on Granite Grab at the end of this talk. So if anyone wants to go and review them, I'll, put, I'll also post the links as to where they can get the information. Excellent, excellent. Folks, thanks, uh, Jorge. Yeah, Jorge, thank you very much. You are a treasure of knowledge here, and we're very thankful that you come on the show. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. All right. Take care, Jorge. And, folks, we're going to be uh, moving on now. Uh, We have uh, Max Abrams, who's supposed to be coming in pretty soon, uh, Representative Josh Moore, on the recent uh, memo that basically says we don't care about no stinking parental notification or rights at all on the the part of parents according to their kids in our school system. We have your children. And uh, again, whiskey. Which, which, which has been something they've but, been working on since Bismarck. But, but we're going to talk about that in a couple of minutes. We're going to go to a break right now, and uh, we'll be back. Clock TV.